Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Goonies World. I am Johnny Faro, also known as Sean, and with me, as always, is Meanie, also known as Ryan. What's up? And, of course, we have Goonie, also known as Colin. Hello. And uh, today on Goonies World, we're going to get fuzzy and furry and cute because we're going to play Bunnies and Burrows. And this is actually the original version by B. Dennis Sestari and Scott Robinson from 1976. It doesn't get much more old school than that, I don't think. That's only a few years after the original Dungeons and Dragons came out. This was a quick follower. There have been many iterations since then of Bunnies and Burrows. Um, but this is the original. And we've never played it before, and as always, we'll probably gloss over some of the rules or even get them wrong, but we will have fun. And so, today we are rabbits, and our characters live in a place called the Longwood, which is a strip of land several hundred acres long and about a dozen acres wide. And it used to be an estate back in the 1930s, but humans don't come here much anymore because this land is now marked as drainage by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Not that the rabbits realize this, but you guys live in a settlement called Stonewall, which is a large burrow built under the ruins of an old stone wall, which is now kind of semi-tumbled down and covered with moss. And the rabbits of Stonewall are very prosperous and industrious, and since they breed like rabbits, they were obliged to found a colony several generations ago. This colony is called Bywater, and it's many, many acres away by the large lake. And today there's a regular trade that goes on between the two communities, which are a few days' travel apart. And radishes and turnips and things like that from Stonewall are carried to Bywater and traded for watercress and sweet potato vine and other more aquatic foodstuffs. Uh, there's another settlement, too, in the area called Drainpipe, but that's a community of outcasts and mavericks and other wicked and irresponsible rabbits, and decent rabbits don't go there. It's not far from a place you guys call The Big House, which is on the northern boundary of the Longwood that's a big human house where an old human woman lives with this huge black cat named Piwacket, who has murdered many rabbits, and people live in fear of him. So the rabbits of Drainpipe, by the way, have taken up with stoats and foxes and other troublemakers, and there are dark rumors that those rabbits of Drainpipe have even started eating meat. But mostly, they stay to their neck of the woods in the north, and they rarely trouble the rabbits of Stonewall for... Stonewall has many strong fighters and swift runners to keep the community safe. And let's meet two of them. Why don't we start, Ryan, with your character? Want to tell us your name and profession and a little bit about yourself? Well, um, I was originally going to... Uh, I, I couldn't resist the temptation of, of um, naming a, a, bu a bunny character after uh, Bun E. Carlos, the uh, uh, you know legendary drummer of Cheap oh, Trick, yes. but... Um, I ended up making a runner, uh, so I went with Run E. Carlos instead. Nice, nice. And, and he's a he's a, a European rabbit uh, oh, okay. from the Iberian Peninsula. A nice, small little fuzzball. Great. But he's very, very, very fast. Oh yes, I would hope so. Being a runner. Okay. And then, of course, we also have Goonie's character. Goonie, can you tell us a little bit about your character? Yeah, so my original idea f for a name was um, Dennis Hopper. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I, then I thought I'd have to do the voice, and that's not, uh, not very good. So uh, I went with Foo-Foo. Uh, and um, you might have heard that uh, poem, Little Bunny Foo Foo. And I chose that. I, I already told you guys that, but I chose that because uh, when I was looking that up on the in the Wikipedia uh, article, it talks about a, uh, a good fairy uh, threatening to turn uh, Little Bunny Foo Foo into a goon or a goonie. So, I pretty much figured I'd have to go with Fufu. It's like the perfect, perfect uh, 
Providence almost. Yeah, it's a seren- yeah. serendipity. It's, it's meant to be. It's meant to be. Yeah. It's destiny. So let's 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 wind back in time to 1976 and the magical world of bunnies and burrows. Now, as I said, you live in a community called Stonewall, and the ruler of Stonewall is a very wise old rabbit named Granny Maisie. She's seen many, many winters, and she's had many, many children, and she's related in some way to almost every single rabbit in Stonewall. But one morning, you two are out having breakfast in the meadow. The uh, sun is shining. There's a lot of blue and green, all the wonders of nature to be seen, dragonflies flitting about. And suddenly, your friend Duggar, who is a friendly mole who runs errands for the rabbit, just pops up out of the ground in front of you, and he goes, Hey! How you fellas doing? Granny Maisie wants you. She wants you real bad. She got a mission for you. What? <clears throat> what kind of, What are you talking about? A mission? I don't want to do a mission. I want to eat this clover right now. It tastes good. Mm, it's the best clover in the entire meadow. I tell you what. I... I live for missions. Please tell me about this mission. Oh, I've been sworn to secrecy. I can't tell you anything about it. Now, you guys could try to persuade him to give you a bit of a heads up about what the mission is about, or you could just go see Granny Maisie. Everyone wants to try what? persuading somebody. I don't know, Fufu. What, I, I'll do whatever you want. I'm, but I... Gosh, I just got the, got the best clover right here. And I don't, I don't know. It is a good clover. It's excellent clover. You will find more clovers, but we must, we must, uh, we must seek out, uh, Granny and find out what mission she has for us. Okay. <clears throat> well, just to play with the rules a little bit, does anyone want to try to persuade him to give you a little bit more information? Yeah, um, hey, hey, Doug, I want to, <clears throat> and now I'm changing my accent. <laughs> Tell us what this. Tell, tell me what this mission is about. I, I I need to know. I need to know if it's going to pull me away from this from this delicious clover. Well, what's your charisma, Ronnie Carlos? Oh gosh, uh, nine. Not not good. Okay. Well, let's see here. You got a base ten percent chance to persuade somebody of something, and then with a nine charisma, um, you got a thirty percent chance to persuade him to give you any details because. Duggar, Duggar is a bit of a gossip, but he's pretty loyal to Granny Maisie. Well, Ronnie Carlos rolls a seven. Oh, my. Well, listen, I shouldn't say so, but you know the rabbit John Radisher? You know, the fellow who trades radishes to Bywater? Well, he's gone missing, and he should have returned from Bywater by now, but I, I think she wants you to find him. You know, since you're such a, a, a fast runner and Fufu's such a tough fighter. Well, he, he does bring in the best radishes. If we don't get his radishes and this clover, I mean, radish is better than clover, you know. They, 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 yeah, we, we got it. We got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I think we got to go talk to Granny Maisie then. Okay, bye. And Duggar pops back down into his hole and runs off on some other subterranean mission. So you guys uh, maybe have a last few bites of clover, and as you're on your way back to Stonewall to see Granny Maisie, you hear someone crying. <laughs> <laughs> and you see a piglet that you guys know whose name is Aloysius. He sometimes gathers herbs for the herbalists. I guess they're herbs, right? Are we going to say herbs or herbs? I'm going to say herbs. Mm. Herbs, yeah. yeah. Herbs is very uh, British. It's very British. Too. It's very British. Hello. He gathers herbs. Uh, anyway, he gathers herbs for the herbalists of Stonewall, and he wears a little bag around his neck. I should point out you guys have little bags around your neck, too, that you can put little things in. Um, but Aloysius, he's crying, like I say, and he's sitting by the roots of the old oak tree, and he's looking into a hole that's down in between the roots. <laughs> Why do you weep, Piglet? Well, <laughs> I've dropped my truffle. I've dropped my truffle. He found me a nice truffle, and I've dropped it down into the hole, and I'm too big to get in there and get it. Won't you go in and get it for me? Oh, pre- please. Pretty please. I just need me truffle. <laughs> Can't you get any more truffles? Ooh. It's very hard to come by. <laughs> well, I am a large rabbit. I think Run is a uh, much smaller statue stature and will fit in that 
cold nicely. You calling me? You calling me skinny or something? I don't know. I'd, fine, but I tell you're you what, a runt. I'll go in there and get you a truffle. But uh, oh, thank you. I want. I, I want I want half of it. You know, troubles that, that, that is really good. I can't give you half me trouble, but I'll give you something very nice if you get it for me. I promise. I have lots of goodies in me bag. <laughs> mm, I'm right. I'm right. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't need to roll anything to squeeze down into the hole, and you're staying outside of the hole, right, Fufu? I mean, you could fit in there, but uh, yeah, if you want to feel big and tough, you can. I think his. Yeah, his. Um Perception of himself is a bit exaggerated. Okay, okay. Well, Ronnie, you <laughs> you get down into the uh, into the hole, and obviously you could see in dim light fairly well. And down in there, you see this huge snapping turtle. Everybody knows him. They call him Nelly because a long time ago, some human girl got him and wrote her name in nail polish. You know, on the turtle shell. You know how? Uh, at least I used to know people who would do that back in the day. Vandals. Yeah, so he's got the word Nelly written on the side of his uh, shell, but he's sitting down in there. He's so big, he must have barely gotten in here or got in there some other way. And the truffle is sitting there between his two front claws, and he's kind of batting them back and forth. And he's like, what's up, rabbit? And I was like, come in to get the truffle from you. I got to give it to a, uh, uh, the pig outside. Uh. Mm, that was my truffle now. I don't want to give it to you. And he looks like he's oh. just playing around with it. He's obviously not going to eat it. You know, you don't you don't eat truffles, man. Pigs are uh, uh, snapping turtles don't eat truffles. No, oh, no, no. You rabbits are always so fast and bragging about how fast you are, and bragging about how you can beat me in a race. And I don't know if I want to give up my truffle, even to the even if I can hear that stupid piglet crying out there. Now, are you saying you don't think I can beat you in a race? No, I know you could, but I'm tired of hearing about it all the time. I just can't help it if I like to live modestly. Now, you basically have a couple of options here. You could just try to steal that truffle and, you know, grab it and run. Or you could try to persuade him somehow to give you the truffle. I mean, <clears throat> his name's Ronnie Carlos. Uh, yes, it so is. He clearly thinks he's fast enough to uh, get this truffle uh, without getting snapped. Snapped by uh, Nelly, hopefully. Well, he's pretty, pretty fast. So uh, now stealing something is not so much a matter of speed as it is dexterity, which is more like manual dexterity. But what is your dexterity? It is 10. Okay. Well, you have a 50% chance to just grab this truffle and before he can do anything about it. And uh, roll a 15. Hey. Rolling well so far. We're rolling great tonight. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, this is my truffle. Oh. Adios, sucker. Oh. Uh, you pop up out of the hole with the proudly with the truffle. And, uh, oh, the truffle. Oh. Aloysius is just thrilled. Oh, thank you for me, truffle. Uh, I'm going to give you something very, very nice. And he shakes and empties out his bag, and four red berries fall to the ground. The red berry, red berry is an herb that heals people. Well, heals rabbits. I might say people sometimes, and I obviously just mean the woodland denizens, you know. But each of you can get two red berries, and a red berry heals 1d6 points of damage should you become so unfortunate as to become damaged during the course of your adventures. Well, thank you so much. I just so appreciate it. I do love a good truffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, no problem. Uh, <clears throat> Nelly's down there. He was playing with it. Nelly's a big bully. <laughs> and um, he, he, he begins to enjoy his truffle, though, and gives you a, a, a look of gratitude and admiration. And you're now free to uh, move on to Stonewall. And uh, leaving the meadow, you follow the path to Stonewall, which is in a heavily treed area. It's just an old stone wall from back when this used to be a big human estate. Like I said, it's semi-ruined, and most of the burrow is down beneath it, but there's plenty of loose stones to where there are some upper levels. Uh, it's always extremely crowded and busy. As you approach it, it just towers above you. And going under the wall where the main entrance is, you find yourselves in a very crowded and busy burrow with rabbits just running to and fro on their various missions. And uh, 
you know, various rabbits say, good morning, and how are you? And, oh, Fluffy was just saying good morning. Oh, was he? And things like that. But you move through the maze-like corridor to the Great Hall where Grandma Maisie usually holds court. And there she is, a huge rabbit with grizzled white whiskers. You're late, she says. I certainly hope you have a good reason. I had to, I had to get a truffle for the pig. We, we were good Samaritans. Yes, well, I suppose I approve of that. And from what I can smell, you've got yourselves a few red berries, I presume as a reward. Exactly. Yes, that's right. I certainly hope you won't need them. Now, listen. Fufu, you're one of our strongest fighters. And Rodney Carlos, you're one of our swiftest runners. Now, I want you to find John Radisher. As you know, he pushes his little radish cart to Bywater once a fortnight. And you guys have seen this cart before. It's actually a battered old toy Tonka truck that some human has discarded. And he fills it up with radishes and and pushes it around. He's been uh, gone for a fortnight uh, to his trading at Bywater to bring back some watercress. And we've expected him to return by now, but he has not. Now, he's been very unhappy lately, I know not why, so perhaps his mind was not on what he was doing, and he's fallen into mischief or trouble. But please, do find him and bring him back if you can. And if you can't, it would be nice to retrieve the radish cart, for such things are hard to come by. Do you have any questions before you go? You say he was, uh, he was down in Bywater? Yes, he was on his way to Bywater to trade radishes for watercress, and we've expected him back by now. As you know, we have many young bunnies who have just been born, as they usually are, and watercress is very good for them to eat. And uh, we've missed him. Of course, we miss him for his personality. But as I say, he's been somewhat moody and disconsolate of late, and he's resisted my attempts to psychoanalyze him. So... Yes. So you have no idea of the nature, the reason why he has been moody? No, I've attempted to talk to him about it on several occasions, but he shrugs and uh, seems seems uh, disinclined to discuss the matter, even with me. As you know, I'm his great-great-aunt four times removed, as I am yours. Oh, yes. Yes. But I... I you think... Yes, go ahead, oh. Ronnie. I was just going to ask if you think that maybe the... Um the, 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 the jerks over at Drainpipe have something to do with it. I should certainly hope not. Drainpipe is certainly far from here, but you know they've got a new uh, warlord, I guess you should call him now, a very wicked stoat by the name of Bile. And uh, word has come to me of him, but usually they keep to themselves, and the path to Drainpipe, or I'm sorry, the path to Bywater leads nowhere near Drainpipe, so unless they're out roaming around causing trouble. But I would... I would, uh certainly be most disappointed if that were the case. And if that is the case, I definitely want you to uh, let me know. I suppose you should start looking for him on the path to Bywater, however. His tracks should be fairly easy to follow. And of course, there is the path that goes over the Fallen M and Pebble Brook and Roundhead Hill and so on. You know the path. Yes, Granny. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> I guess uh, I guess we should get going and get some. Uh, try to find this guy. Get some radishes. Oh yes, the sooner the better. The sooner the better. Well, yes, yes. May the blessings of the woodland fairy go with you. Please do not. Please conduct yourselves with honor and do not let the fairy turn you into a goonie. <laughs> I, I will not let you down, Granny. Yes, I'm especially talking to you, little bunny foo foo. I suppose you're not so little anymore. I am the biggest in the burrow. Well, uh, some of the other bunnies uh, gather to see you off as you guys head off on your important mission. And you uh, leave the tumble-down community of Stonewall and head out on the well-known path to Bywater. And you go far from Stonewall, past the fallen elm and... You go. You hop across the pebbles on Pebble Brook, and you go. You go up over Roundhead Hill, all the while following the path. And over Roundhead Hill, the path plunges down into a, a woodland valley, and it goes right by this huge weeping willow 
and the path kind of disappears under the long branches, you know, the trail all the way down to the forest floor. Do you want to go inside the umbrella-like chamber that must be within the weeping willow? Well, this is where the path goes. Yep. Well, I suppose, uh, you know, the radisher could be in there, so we should check it out. Yes, we must follow this path. I suspect predation has fallen upon our friend, but that is no matter. I am a great warrior. Well, you gently push aside the trailing branches of the weeping willow and inside, like I said, it's this umbrella-like chamber, all emerald green with shafts of golden sunlight poking through, and there is the radish cart. But there's no radishes in it, and John Radish is not in it. There are actually three weasels here. They are notorious local gangsters and troublemakers. People call them the Wheezy Boys. And uh, their names are Greedy Gut and Vinegar Tom and Sugar Sack. Last summer, in fact, they beat up your friend Hamish, and his ear is still torn. It'll never be the same. And they're, they're smoking corn silk back here, and they're writing immature words like butt and fart on the, on the, the trunk of the willow tree. And one of them, uh, Greedy Gut, turns around when, when you guys enter. Well, well, well. Look who it is, Vinegar Tom. Hey, what's up, little rabbits? Hey, sugar sack, look up. It's some little rabbits. Hey, little rabbits, what you gonna do, little rabbits? What's up today, little rabbits? You looking for a fight, little rabbits? As a matter of fact. But first, we have questions. Oh, yeah, you got some questions? We'll ask away, and maybe you just won't get socked in the mouth for your impertinence, huh? <laughs> we seek John Radisher. His, this is his cart. It is abandoned. And what do you know about it? Nah, we don't know nothing. We're stupid. Yeah, we were too cool for school. That's right. No, oh, I see. Yeah, what do we want? You just happened to come upon this empty cart? Yeah, what's, well, so what if we did? So what if we just found it, huh? Huh? You, you know what? If you want any answers out of us, you're going to have to get them the hard way. What do you think? And uh, the guy who's doing most of the talking is uh, Greedy Gut, but Vinegar Tom and Sugar Sack, they, they approach aggressively with their corn silk cigarettes dangling from their mouths. And... Uh, yeah, let's see just how tough you guys are. You think you're so tough? You think you're going to come in here into our turf and mess with us? Why don't you give him a good smack there, uh, Sugar Sack? And Sugar Sack approaches Runny, and uh, Vinegar Tom approaches Foo Foo. And do you guys want to fight them, or do you want to run away, or what do you want to do? Uh, well, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, that the fighter wants to fight, and I'm sure the runner wants to run, but... <clears throat> So, I know what I'm doing. Well, even if the even if the runner wants to run, one thing runners are very good at is dodging and evading in combat, and they can almost get the jump on literally the jump on a fight all the time and choose you know what they might like to do uh, before uh, uh, they you know you can kind of get a sense of what Sugar Sack is going to try to do. And it looks like Sugar Sack's going to come in and, and try to bite you and hold on to you and wiggle you around for a little bit, Runny. And uh, before you commit to whatever you want to do, you, you, you can tell that that's what his plan is. Fufu's not so quick on the jump. He's a little better at actual fighting. but uh, so, so, yeah, um, Sugar Sack comes in. Yeah, yeah, you want to you do something, huh? You want to do something, little Runny? Little diarrhea runny. That's what I call you. Huh? Huh? Well, uh, if it looks like he's going to attempt to bite, uh, then I'm just going to dodge. Okay. And by the way, you can actually attack and dodge in the same turn because you're a runner. And so if you'd like to give him a smack. But hey, we'll start simple. And for now, you can go ahead and dodge. You're the defender in this situation. And because he's trying to bite you and hold on and... You are trying to dodge. Uh, you have a 28% chance to not get hit by him as he swoops in with his fast weasel-like reflexes. Okay. 47. 
Not good enough, damn it. No, not good enough, I'm afraid. But luckily for you, it, the bite only causes one point of damage. But it smarts. It certainly smarts. Uh, meanwhile, um, Vinegar Tom is, is charging in towards you, Foo Foo. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fast, uh, I'm a fast machine. I'm a fast machine just like this little truck, just like this little cart. Watch me dance. Watch me dance. Hey, hey, big fella. Hey. And uh, he's silence. And he does a lot of talking and smack talking while he's fighting. You're not sure what he's going to do when he comes in. What would you like to do to him, Foo Foo? Uh, let's try to kick him. Okay, well, he was going to try, actually, to claw you. Now, uh, you try to kick... So you have a 25% chance to... I'm sorry, you have a 35% chance, being a fighter of great strength. You have a 35% chance to give him a kick. All right. No, 89. 89. Well, you miss him, and he he gives you a claw and does two points Ah. of damage. The claw just does a flat two points. Don't you? How dare you? Yeah, and uh, so now you guys can uh, fall. <laughs> uh, says says uh, greedy gut from the back of the radish cart as he hurls verbal abuse in your direction. Now you guys have a chance to become the aggressors and the attackers in this situation. And Ronnie, you always go first, being a runner. What, what would you like to do? Hmm. And you say he can, uh, <clears throat> being a runner, can. Uh Attack and dodge are the same. That's round. right. You can always assume a dodge or run action in addition to whatever else you're doing. Cool. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, he's gonna attempt a, a rip. I'm not even sure what that is, but I think ripping sounds like fun. I think ripping sounds like fun too, and it will definitely do a lot of damage. And so it's it's literally grabbing with your teeth and trying to rip off part of his flesh, and. He, in fact, is not very imaginative. He's trying another bite and hold. But with a rip attempt, you have a 50% chance to grab and rip. 18. Oh, nice. So you may do two dice of damage to him with the grab and rip. That is 2d6. Jesus Christ. So that's going to be 5 plus 5, 10. Oh, he got me! He got me! Oh, uh, oh no! It's a sugar sack, and he's, uh, they haven't held on, you know, you just grabbed and done a rip, and blood appears on his weasel-like fur. Uh, meanwhile, Fufu, um, you, of course, are still grappling with Vinegar Tom. You know, you ain't gonna rip me! I ain't never got ripped! Unless I got ripped on corn silk, huh? Ha 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 ha! Yeah, that's a good one! Hollers, greedy gut. And, uh, so how, how would you like to attack Vinegar Tom? Uh, I'm going to try to bite and release. Okay. So, the bite and release. And he is uh, trying to come in for a nice claw on you, too. And you have a 51% chance to... This includes some bonuses for the fighter, by the way. Uh, normally, this would be a 41% chance, but because of your stats and, and career... You have a 51% chance to uh, successfully bite and then release. 24. Hey, hey, hey. Now, a bite and release will do one dice of damage. And... Okay. Um, And we roll a d6? That's right. And if you roll a 6, let me know. I also remembered that uh, as a fighter, I have a plus one damage. That's right. Thank you for that reminder. And if you do roll a six, this particular maneuver has a critical hit option. So if you roll a six, let me know. Okay. Now I roll a two plus one is three. Okay. Ow! Ow! Hey! Hey! What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, at that point, uh, they, they Sugar Sack is a coward at heart, and Sugar Sack turns and runs, trailing Weasel Blood, and he goes and hides. Behind Three cowards. He goes and hides behind the behind the the uh, the little Tonka truck radish cart, and greedy gut who's doing a lot of smack talk looks a little bit worried. Um, you guys are both now facing Vinegar Tom. Vinegar Tom, he's a little bit damaged, not much. He's not completely ready to give up yet. Turning around and looking at his friends, and certainly wanting to look tough, uh, he also decides to try to. Rip at uh, the smaller one of you, which is Runny, and who I will assume will try to dodge. And because you're trying to dodge and he's trying to rip, 
Oh, guess what? He has a big fat 0% chance to actually rip at you because he's not a fighter. And so he tries, but fails to rip at he you. He rips himself. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, they, they he, he runs off, and they're all kind of cowering over by the cart now. Hey, what, what, what is all this about? We're just having a little fun with you. Says Greedy Good. Just having a little fun, just a little uh, exercise in the morning, huh? Yes, it was fun. Thank you. Was Greedy Gut in the back of the truck? Yeah, yeah. Without saying anything, I think Runny is just going to uh, explode towards the truck and attempt to push it and run over the cowering <laughs> weasels behind it. Well, now you can uh, you can run pretty far. What what is your speed? Fifteen. Yeah, you, you. No, sorry, sorry, seventeen. You can actually dash like fifty yards in a burst, so you got plenty of room and momentum. You go charging. Are you trying to like knock the truck over, or just like knock him out of the back of the truck? Uh, what I'm specifically trying to do is uh, run over the uh, the cowering weasels behind it, and then what I would like to do is <laughs> keep him in the truck and then slam it into a tree or something. Okay, so th- that kind of sounds like a pin type of action to me, I think. And uh, they they would probably try to run away when they saw you coming, but you're pretty fast. And therefore, you have a 64% chance of accomplishing your goal. That's going to be a success. With that, a 26. That's great. And you may roll one dice of damage to each of them as they are smacked into the tree. Uh, well, uh, I rolled a five and a one. I don't know if I should just roll once or what. Um, no, you can roll for each one of those guys. And, uh, yeah, in fact, I, I guess we, uh, the five will go ahead and, and uh, attach to uh, uh, Sugar Sack, who's already messed up. And he's, he's just... Uh, Completely out of it. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is greedy. Get all right, all right. We'll tell you what you want to know. All right, man, you come in yes. here to our territory. You, you, you're rude. You know we're just trying to to be peaceful here. Here, well, let's all relax and have a little corn silk. Okay, you want a corn silk cigarette? And he tries. Do you guys want to take a corn silk cigarette? Never. No, I don't. They don't smoke. Are you kidding me? All right, so look, we're just having a little fun, all right? They, uh, Vinegar Tom, uh, t- check out, uh, check out Sugar Sack there. Make sure he's all right. All right, all right, I'll check him out. So, yeah, l- listen, a few days ago, okay, we saw this John Radisher. He's pushing the cart in here, right? But then, uh, we was outside, you know, uh, getting some corn silk together. Because, you know, we like to smoke the corn silk. So we see him push the cart in here, right? But then he comes out alone and he leaves the path. I, you know, we thought, hey, that ain't right. There's something strange going on here, yeah? So we're curious, okay? Because we're weasels. So we come in here and we find the car by itself. And uh, John Radisher, uh, he's taken off up the northern trail that leads up to the big house. So he's probably done for. You know, that big cat pie whack at the big bastard probably got him. Ripped his head off of something and ate him up. But what I thought was funny is he was carrying something. I thought it was like a huge blunt, right? Like a giant corn silk blunt. It's like some kind of rolled up like a scroll, you know, like some kind of piece of paper or something. And I'm thinking, what's he doing carrying around some trash and leaving his card in here? It don't make no sense. Don't make no sense to me, but that's all we know, okay? So we decided, hey, this is a sweet ride, right? We're going to take it. We're going to trick this thing out, make it a low rider, see? It's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. I think Sugar Sack's going to be okay. I think Sugar Sack's going to be okay, says Vinegar Tom. Oh, 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 says Sugar Sack. So that's, that's, so all, you, that's all we know, I swear. Did you talk to him? No, we didn't talk to him because he's a little far away when we first saw him, right? And we, uh, we, we thought we'd uh, go in there and get, get our hands on the truck, see? And we found, we found this car, this truck here, and we, 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 we peeked out and we saw him going up the northern trail. Usually he's pushing this thing to buy water, right? But, uh, but nah, he's, uh, he's going off to the north. I don't know what he wants at the big house, but I'm telling you, I, you, you go anywhere near the big house, that, that big bastard pie whack, and he's probably got him, probably ripped his head off. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, I believe, uh, I actually agree that, uh, he is, came into contact with pie whack, and he is probably done for. Yeah, all right, mystery solved then, all right? So let's just go But we must find out to make sure. We must find his body and bring it back to the 
village. Yeah, well, I hope you're not thinking you're going to carry it around and push his body around in our sweet ride here, because this is ours now. Now you have given me a great idea. Yes, no. that is exactly what I no. will do. And, of course, Granny Maisie did ask you to try to retrieve the, the cart, because these things are hard to come by. But this is like a really awesome little Tonka truck with, like, the lights on top, you know, like the Casey lights and everything. It's kind of beat up mm. and dirty, but they obviously want it. Hey, yeah, and don't get any ideas. It's all right now. Find his keepers, huh? Yeah, find his keepers, mumbles Sugar Sack. Yeah, find his keepers, hmm. says Vinegar Tom. I'm afraid I did not agree to that. Oh, yeah, you want to start something up again? You want to start something up again? I'm good to go. I'm still good to go. Let's go. Oh, no, 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 no. That's all right. 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 No, 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 no that's okay. Wanna... No, no, that's okay. Take the take it, take oh. it. I, I think it's ugly anyway. I hate it. I hate it. It's not a sweet ride. It sucks. I don't want it. Yeah, we don't want it. Yeah, we don't want it. You are strange creatures. Yeah, you're a strange creature. You're a fart. You're a butt. And he points to the words that he's written what? on the... On the no, never mind. And then the second you say what, they like scamper off and, and run out of the weeping willow. I am not a fart or a butt. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, why don't you uh, get in the um, get in this truck here and uh, let me push you over to the big house. I think I would be better suited for pushing, but um, you uh, maybe could push faster. I don't know. I'm faster. I, I'm faster. I'm faster than anybody. Yes, I. Uh, I think you are right. I will not try to outdo you in running. I am simply the strongest in the borough. Everyone knows that and may not challenge me. Okay. Well, you know, John Radisher pushed this uh, truck around a lot and he was pretty good at it. What is your strength, Fufu? That is what is 15. Uh, no, my oh, no. strength. So you're well, whoever's going to push it, actually. Uh uh, well, I was going to push it just because oh, I, okay. I figured it was, he, was faster. Oh, I see what so you're saying. Push but yeah, it yeah. Quickly. Let's see. So, 15, uh, looks like you have a 65% chance to push this uh, this uh, truck with no problem. <laughs> 91. Oh, how embarrassing. Yeah. Hey, hey, we saw that, says a voice from far away. Eat shit. <laughs> we scram. We do. Well, you got some shit. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're just hiding in a distance, taunting you. Uh, Foo Foo, do you want to try to to move the? Yes. Uh, uh, what's your? I know if if John Radisher can do it, I certainly can. Well, what? It's what, seventeen. Okay, you have an eighty-five percent chance to push the push the little Tonka truck with no problem. <laughs> oh my God! I rolled a ninety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you dare laugh at me? You better l- leave now. Uh, wait, wait, wait. We'll I'll, I'll come. I'm gonna come down there and slaughter Look, you. We'll make a deal with you, all right? We'll make a deal with you. And you know how we weasels. We're, we're we're weasels of our word, right? Ain't we weasels of our word, Vinegar Tom? Yeah, we're we're weasels of our word. Ain't we weasels of our word, Sugar Sack? Yeah, we're weasels of our word. We're the wheezy boys, and we don't. Uh, we don't back off on our on our word. Okay, so listen. I can smell that you got some red berries, right? So come on, give give our buddy here two red berries, okay? And if you give us a two red berry, we promise, we promise on the weasel's code. And you know you can take that seriously. That's like the pirate's code, okay? We promise on the weasel's code. You give you give sugar sack, you know, two red berries because you ripped him up. You ripped him up bad. We admit it. You're tougher than us, okay? So you give him two of those red berries, and we we'll guard this here for you, and we'll watch it, okay? And we'll watch it for you, because I tell you what, you know, if the pie whacker got him, there ain't gonna be much to carry back. I'll tell you that right now. Ain't that right, Vinegar Tom? Yeah, that's right. Ain't that right, Sugar Sack? Yeah, that's right. Come on. Give me a red berry. I promise on the pirates, on the, on, on the weasel's coat. We, we, we won't let uh, we won't let nothing happen to it. I promise. I don't know. What do you think, Fufu? Mm. Well, I do know the weasel's coat is strong. It may not be broken, so. And I need not these berries for healing. So I shall happily hand over two berries if you will watch this immovable cart. 
ye- that <laughs> needs to be oiled. Well, why do you think we ain't moved it yet? All right, so uh, here you go. Here you go, sugar sack. Here you go, buddy. And uh, sugar sack is healed of seven points of damage from the red berry. He's like, oh, that's good. That's good. Thanks a lot. All right. You guys ain't bad for rabbits. You know that. You're not bad. Yeah, you're not bad, says Vinegar Tom. Yeah, you're not bad. We're, we're going to hang out here and smoke our corn silk, but you be careful around that pie whack out, all right? He's a big bastard. Fighting him ain't going to be like fighting us. I have been dreaming of fighting pie whack it my whole life. Yeah, it's more like a nightmare, friend. <laughs> Just make sure you keep a close eye on this cart, and when we return... We hope to find you here. Yeah, do Or else I, we will find find you wherever you we're are. We're going to be here. What are you talking about? We don't want the Weasel King to know we broke the Weasel's code. A promise is a promise. Ain't that right, Vinegar Tom? Yeah, a promise is a promise. Ain't that right, Sugar Sack? Yeah, a promise is a promise. Well, hopefully we will come back with uh, John Radisher. He did not <clears throat> get eaten by Piwacket, but we shall see. And if we do return with John Radisher, you must return, of course, his cart to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least they find his keepers. But hey, he left it here. But all right, all right. No, no, no. You don't have to get uh, puffed up. Don't worry about it. No, deal's a deal. Deal's a deal. <coughs> so, I will assume then that you guys uh, go ahead and head off. Now, the weasel said that he took the, uh, the northern path, which will take you not in the direction of Bywater, where John Radisher was supposedly going. And, of course, they mentioned he's carrying some kind of rolled up piece of paper like they thought it was a great big corn silk blunt at first but uh, now <clears throat> you're not really on the path anymore and it's not so easy to follow the little ruts so what we want to do to try to pick up the trail of John Rasher is to try to smell him out and so whatever your smell score is times 10 <clears throat> that's what your smell is going to be but take 10 away because there's been some time that's passed that we have to account for. So you'd uh, multiply your smell score by 10, then subtract 10 from that, and then that final total would be your percent chance to pick up his smell. Well, it's going to be 110 for me. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Yeah. So you'd really only Man. fail on a 96 to 100, which would be a critical failure. Um, <coughs> I have a 40% chance, and I don't get it. No, I rolled a 64. Well, you succeed, but you don't succeed in a way, because you actually cannot smell John Radisher's familiar smell, but you do smell the telltale scent of something called a snuff ball which is an herbal concoction that the rabbits of Stone Hollow sometimes use to mask their scent. Oh, I don't think he, I think he did not want to be followed. Strange. You you smelled this concoction the snuff ball. Snuff ball, yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I did not smell this scent, but I Trust your nose. Oh, yes, I think we're going in the right direction. Yeah, and you did, you rolled so nicely and had such a high percent chance anyway. I suppose you could also, you know, detect the very faint trace of the, the musk that is John Radisher. But yeah, it almost appears that he doesn't want to be followed or found. So I'll assume that you follow that scent along the great northern path, which leads up out of the valley. <clears throat> and eventually up a hill and at the top of the hill there's this tall wooden rickety old fence it's completely covered with vines and there's a little hole in the base of one of the of the slats of this big fence this is the big house you've been by here before but you've never actually been in there would you like to go in under the rickety old fence into the big yard of the big house and see if you can find John Radisher? I will, of course, remind you that this yard is where Piwacket lives. I would like to attempt to smell for Piwacket. Okay, you have that same uh, percentage, only there's no minus 10. Not that it would all be the same to you, so we're just basically looking for a critical failure here. 
46. Is oh, that a good yeah. You smell pie wacket. You smell his strong caddy smell. You can even smell, you know, his urine and uh, everything else. You smell definitely pie wackets in the yard right now. You don't see him, of course, because you haven't peeked in there yet or uh, gone into the, the little slat in the fence. But pie wackets definitely in the yard somewhere. Right. So, hey, that cat, that cat is in there. He's in the yard right now. You detect a feline odor? For sure, yes, 100%. Yes, well, we must ascertain his position. Okay, well, I... I'm on, uh, I'll peek, uh, peek, peek, just peek in under the fence and see. Yes, take a peek. Well, you both uh, stick your little heads under there and... You can see the yard. It's all overgrown. There's an old human woman who has this yard, and the house is kind of falling apart. And it's not part of a neighborhood. You know, this house is far away from other human settlements, right up on the edge of this U.S. Army Corps of Engineers land. And you can see the back porch, and the rickety old nasty back porch. Of course, the first thing you see on top of the porch in a shaft of sunlight is the huge hulking black form of Pie Wacket. But he is asleep in the sun. And he's breathing very slowly. And he's very lazy and he's big. He's fat too because he's killed lots of animals and eaten them. But he seems like he's sound asleep. But you know, these are slats. The stairs that go up to the porch are slats. You can kind of see under, the, even though it's dark. And you can see... A little cotton tail in there, kind of shaking and trembling. Could just be a breeze. Oh, let's make him move, but he could be hiding under there, terrified and afraid to come out. What do you guys want to do? Of course, if you were to shout to him or something, it might wake up Pie Wacket. Does this um, fence look like <clears throat> something that the, the cat could easily just hop over or... Or go through the oh, yeah. hole. Oh, yeah. Oh. Pie Wacket comes out sometimes and hunts. But mostly he's so lazy, he just waits for little animals to come to him. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to try to sneak over to uh, the cotton tail. Okay. What about what about you, Fufu? You want to go with him? Uh, yeah. Okay. That was our chance while the beast slumbers. Well, well, what is your speed, Ronnie? I'll assume it's pretty speedy. Yes, so that is 17. Okay, you have a 90% chance to sneak over there without uh, waking Pie Wacket. And what is your speed, Fufu? 12. Okay, uh, you have a 50% chance to sneak over there without waking Pie Wacket. Hmm. No, you know what? Maybe. I'm wrong. If speed is 10 or more, you have a 90% chance. Bunnies are very quiet. Okay. Yes, if speed is 5 to 9, you have a 50% chance. If it's 10 or more, you have a 90% chance. So this system definitely lets bunnies be good at the things they're good at. Let us sneak under the stairs and whisper to... Uh, uh, John Radish, if if that is him. Yeah, I assume we both succeed. I certainly did with 39. So. No, I didn't roll yet, and I got a 17. Oh, that's great. Very quietly, you sneak across the yard with its tall, unmowed grass. And, of course, now you can hear Pie Wacket up there snoozing on the porch with his heavy snore. And creeping under the porch with Pie Wacket basically, you know, six or eight inches above your head. You can see his fur from his fat belly sticking down through the cracks in the wood. And you realize to your horror as you poke your head in that it's just a cotton tail of a bunny. And it seems like it's trembling just because of the, the very light breeze. But there's also this rolled up piece of paper to a human eye it would look like like adding machine tape you know that, that's been rolled up a little bit like a little roll of writing it almost does look like a blunt or a cigarette 
but uh, it appears just the tail of John Radisher is all that's left, and you can definitely recognize his tail. It's just that big, fluffy cotton tail all by itself, and the rest of John Radisher is missing, but there is, there are a few bits of viscera under here as well. It does appear that John Radisher has, is a victim of Biwacket. He's been shredded to bits, I'm afraid. What was this paper he was taking, I wonder? Yes, we must confiscate this mm. paper. And do you want to unroll it and take a look at it, or do you want to take the tail of John Radisher with you? Yeah, I'll take the tail, put it in my pouch, my little necklace pouch. Do you want to roll? Do you want to unroll the the paper and look at it? Yes. Mm. Quiet now. Yeah, very quietly, and that would make it a little bit of a crackle. Since you got a ninety percent chance, let's go ahead and roll and try not to make any noise as you move about under the porch. There's sixteen. Some, oh, great. Well. When you unroll the piece of paper, it's like I said, it's actually a bit of human rubbish. It, it actually is some adding machine tape. And when you pick it up, it comes unrolled, and you can see that it's a drawing of Stonehaven. I'm sorry, Stonewall. It's like a plan of Stonewall showing all the entrances and exits and the location of fighter emplacements and other defenses. This is... There's going to be an invasion... Could it be that John Radisher was a spy? Yes, I think John Radisher was a spy. I have that thought. But the spy for who? I suspect... Dreampipe? Yes. Well, exactly. Just as you say that, and of course you're whispering and being as quiet as you can, suddenly a voice from above you says... I say, old boys, you didn't really think I was asleep, did you? As Piwacket speaks, and that's where we're going to go ahead and, and cut this episode short for tonight. And we'll deal with Piwacket next time. On Goonies World. All right. Oh, very interesting yeah. so far. And as a reward, you may each have one luck point, which will allow you to re-roll a failed roll. Is that actually a mechanic, or did you just... Luck point I made up. Gotcha. Well, we do have, uh, you know, rabbit's feet, so it's lucky. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. So I guess I should give you two, but I won't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, hopefully um, you can deal with Piwacket next time, and uh, I hope all our listeners enjoyed our first descent into the world of the Longwood and... Bunnies and burrows. Uh, it's kind of an interesting system. It's a little wonky if you're used to role playing games. There's like separate sub mechanics for every single stat, and uh, but it's a great early example of a role playing game. And it has certainly had not uh, distanced itself very far from Dungeons and Dragons because you know strength, dexterity, constitution, a lot of the stats are the same, but. Uh, with its emphasis on percentiles, I it could be one of the first ones that ever did that. I, I'm not sure. If anyone knows a lot about this early system, uh, definitely send us an email at gooniesworldpodcast at gmail dot com and uh, let us know about your experiences with it, or if you've ever played the GURPS version of it, or any of the other versions. And in the meantime, we will call it a night for this episode and talk to everybody again next week. So say goodbye, bye, bunnies. Bye, 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 bye. bye. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know if we can, we can edit this out, probably, or, or keep it in. But I, I would uh, like to to thank our uh, our listener for uh, we did get we did get an email uh, with some some, oh, some yeah. stunning facts about Iceland, which uh, was very interesting, and we would just like to uh, say thank you for that. Yes, thank you to our yes. our good friends, our good friend. In Iceland. Actually, he, he's in Canada. <laughs> no, okay. He's not in Iceland. I thought he was he in just, Iceland. He just wanted to give us uh, some fun facts and about Iceland, and we 
appreciate that, I guess. Well, maybe in his honor, we could do like a Viking game someday with a journey to Iceland. I did just... Hey. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, I did just order GURPS Vikings. It came today. So, Graham Davis. We can nice. yeah. go to the land of the ice and snow with the midnight sun. With the, the hot, hot spring springs. flow. Flow. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll find the hammer of the gods, drive our ships to new lands. Fighting the hordes. Uh, screaming and crying. Valhalla. And, um, I am coming. I'm coming. All right. But we aren't uh, coming. We're going. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, goodbye. Goodbye.